what I think is at the core of the postmodern critique. Um, I don't think you can look at the world except through a structure of value. And the, the English, and so you think, well, how did the, how, why is literary criticism so relevant? Well, or become so relevant and so powerful. And I think, well, I believe that we see the world through a narrative framework. And so that, if that's true, and we could talk a little bit about that, what I mean by that, I think you need a mechanism to prioritize your attention. And to, because attention is a finite resource and it's costly, so you have to prioritize it. And there's no difference between prioritizing your attention and imposing a value structure. Those are the same thing. And then I think that the mechanisms that we use to prioritize our attention are stories. And that means that the people who criticize our stories actually have way more power than you think because they're actually criticizing the mechanism through which we look at the world. And so the postmodernists would say, look, you even look at the scientific world through a value-laden lens. And I think, yeah, you do. Uh, they're right. But what they're not right about is that the lens is one of power. And now, for someone like Nietzsche, mm -hmm. The thing about a word like power is you can expand the thing, the borders of the word, to encompass virtually any phenomena you want. And so that's why I tried to define right. power as my willingness to use compulsion on you or other people. Um, because power can be authority, power can be competence. I don't mean any of that. I mean you don't get what you right. to do what you want. Coercion. I get to tell you. Coercion, exactly. And, uh, and I do think the Marxist types view the willingness to use coercion as the driving force of human history. And that's really saying something because that means it's the fundamental motivation. And uh, that's a very caustic criticism. And it's easy to put people back on their heels about that. You know, one of the things you see about capitalists, because I've been stunned to see the CEOs of major corporations like roll over in front of these DEI activists. I think, well, what the hell's wrong with you people? You know, you're not even making use of your privilege. And why are you... Um, well, it's not very powerful if you're the CEO of a major corporation. You can't even withstand some interns who have DEI ideology. It's like it's doing you a lot of good. And uh, so, and why would you produce a fifth column within your own organization that's completely opposed to the entire manner in which you do business and the capitalist enterprise as such? And one answer would be, well, we don't think much about ideas. It's like, well, maybe you should. And... And, you know, you can be cynical about it and say, well, it's just a, a gloss to keep the capitalist enterprise going while appearing to, to meet, you know, the new demands of, of, ethical re of the new ethical reality, which I think is a bad argument, too. Um, but more importantly, it's that people are guilty. And the, the radicals who accuse us all historically and as individuals, of being motivated by nothing but the desire for power, strike a chord, especially in people who are conscientious, you know, because if you're a conscientious person and someone comes to you and says, like a little mob of 30 people says, you know, you could be a little more careful in what you say and do on the racist front and the sexist front, etc., you're likely to think, well, I'm not perfect, I probably could be a little more careful, and it's no doubt that people have been oppressed in the past, and it's also no doubt that in some sense I'm the undeserving beneficiary of historical atrocity, and so, you know, maybe I should look to myself, and that's weaponization of guilt, and it's very effective, and it's not surprising, but it's not helpful. So, you know, so, th so there's a resentment that drives this, like a corrosive resentment that's able to weaponize guilt, and it's very difficult for people to withstand it.